Who is Sheikh Jassim? The prospective new owner of Manchester United is somebody who's been kind of shrouded in mystery up until this point. But The Athletic have done a fantastic in-depth profile on Sheikh Jassim. And what I'm going to do in this video is bring you some key aspects from that. I won't tell you everything that's in it because I think that'll be slightly unfair. I'm going to leave the link to the full profile in the description if you want to go and read it on The Athletic yourself. But there's quite a few bits of new information and I would say quite key information that I'm going to run through in this video. Uh, so you can let me know what you think in the comments below. But I think you'll find this one interesting. I think you should stick around for 10 minutes and we can have a discussion in the comments as we always do. So let's run through. As I said, I've, I've, I've picked out maybe five or six key points and then the rest you can read yourself. What I would say to start with though, yeah, this this is written by Mark Critchley, the profile itself. It's a really strange byline that The Athletic went for there. He likes to have nice things. Given how much information, it, it is an information-dense profile. It's just, it's a bit of a weird byline to have. I don't know why they did that. I really, really don't. But anyway, let's dive into it, all right? Shake just seems a real person. <laughs> End of video. Right, Shake just seems a real person. Yes, cool. Right, we know that. 28 when he joined the board of Credit Suisse, which is young, of course. And he was 16 when he graduated from Sandhurst. Now, we already knew that he went to Sandhurst. If you don't know what Sandhurst is, it's a military academy in the UK. A very prestigious one. It's where all the royal family has gone. There's Prince Harry there with the Queen. He went to Sandhurst, which in itself is not, a, not really a major piece of news. However, this is, the, this is the new bit of information on top of that now. And this is worth discussing. Jasim is listed as one of the hundreds of recruits from there. He was part of the Inkerman Company. But the current Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, entered Sandhurst at the same time and was part of the same company. And when you do a little bit more research, I found this. this is an article from The Independent in 1998 with a list of every single person who graduated on that course. And we can scroll down here, we go right to the bottom, and we see there Sheikh Jassim Hamad Jassim Al Thani and Sheikh Tamim Hamad Al Thani. He graduated from Sandhurst at the same time as the current Emir of Qatar. At that time, I think it was about five years after that, that he became heir to the Qatari throne. Now, of course. There's always been the concept of separation. That's why the 9-2 Foundation exists. That's why Sheikh Jassim's bid is going through that. But he graduated from Sandhurst at the same time. The, the, this is the sort of thing, uh, the sort of research and detail that uh, the Premier League will be doing when they scrutinise any prospective new owner of any football club. And they will do the same thing with Sheikh Jassim and they will do the same thing with Jim Ratcliffe too. But that, I would say that's a new piece of information. And it's certainly one worth discussing. And so is this, right? Uh, in terms of, of his own sort of business acumen, he's a busy guy. He's the chairman of the Qatari Investment Bank. He's also the chairman of Qatar Invest, Qatar's first Islamic investment bank. And he's the chairman of Milahala, a shipping company. So he's the chairman of three companies. He's on the board at Credit Suisse. Dude is around. Dude is busy. And look at that bit there. That second part about the Red Knights. Now, you remember the Red Knights tried to buy Manchester. Well, tried to become... The concept of it was fan ownership model at Manchester United. They tried and failed to raise the, the amount of money needed to get the Glazers out. But look at that bit there. The Glazers... Sorry, the Glazers. The Red Knights reached out to the Qatar royal family to find out if they wanted to partner up. Talks were held in Doha... And Sheikh Jassim was in that meeting with the Red Knights back in 2010. And again, when you're talking about that separation, you're talking about links towards the Qatari state. Why would Sheikh Jassim be in that meeting if the Red Knights had asked the Royal Qatar royal family? Now, he may well have been there in an advisory capacity because at that point in 2010, as I said, he was the chairman of three companies and he was on the board of Credit Suisse. He had a lot of business acumen. So that may well have been why he was there. But again, 
This is all. This is new information that's coming out, and I think it is definitely worth discussing. I do think it is. Oh, well, I know it is the most in-depth bit of profiling that we've had on Sheikh Jassim, and no doubt there'll be more coming after. But because he's, he's kind of been shrouded in mystery, that's why I've found this quite fascinating, and that's why I'm doing this video with you. There's more down here. Again, this is the sort of thing that the Premier League will be doing. They'll be scrutinising. And this part is particularly interesting. Upon his appointment to the Credit Suisse board, they determined that he could not be deemed an independent director under the bank's independent standards. And that's because the Qatar Investment Authority, uh, in the two, after the 2008 financial crisis, Credit Suisse was looking for investment. The Qatar Investment Authority became big investors there. And I think they still own around about 5% of it. And it says there, the bank believed the links between Jassim the QIA and the Althani family and the bank could constitute a material business relationship, so a conflict of interest. So he couldn't be deemed an independent director under their own standards. What does that mean for Manchester United if he was to become the owner? I, I don't know. But these are the questions that, you know, that the fit and proper owner's test model. I'm going to do a separate video on that. It's damn confusing. And there's so many different things going on. I'm going to try and get my head around it and bring it to you. But Credit Suisse found that he couldn't be independent. I wonder... I mean, it won't have that won't have a bearing on what happens at Manchester United. But again, this is new information that I think is, is interesting. And, so, and a, conversation, a conversation and a talking point. And that is why I'm doing this video. Uh, we go down here and, we, and in terms of Sheikh Jassim's finances, I thought this was... An interesting point, because, of course, everything we've heard about Sheikh Jassim is it's, it's a private bid uh, done through the Knife 2 Foundation, and it is Sheikh Jassim's money and his father. I think mean, his father, I mean, there's a lot. His father was a former prime minister of Qatar, I think. And they would just say, look, five billion, if that's what they're, they're about the figure is going to be, when he worked for what bank? Well, when he worked at, when he was at Credit Suisse over seven years, he only got 1.5 mil in cash, significantly lower than five billion. Again, that's an interesting talking point. I think this this part here is particularly interesting because we 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 start to learn a little bit more about the actual character of Sheikh Jassim, who at this point, I mean, I, honestly, I can't wait till I don't have to use this photo again. The amount of times I've had to use that photo, jeez, right. Let's look through this bit. A source who worked closely with the Qatari Royal suggests that as his portfolio widened from the bank, he could not always be credit. He could not. He could not always be present every time Credit Suisse, Suisse's directors sat around the table. That's what happens when you're the chairman of three companies and you're on the board of another one. Down here, there's more information. He asked very good questions. He was very engaged. Occasionally, he'd come out with something and you think he was listening. <laughs> then occasionally, he'd come out with something and you think, nah, <laughs> no, he's not. And that's somebody who's worked with him. Sometimes he really surprised you that he was on the pulse. Other times, less so. Well, that's pretty standard. Sounds like me and meetings at work. Um, this bit down here. Those who have come across Jasim at close quarters in the corporate world use the word reserved regularly. Guarded is another term that often comes up. Whereas his father earned a reputation as a flamboyant and engaging networker, Jasim is not seen as a chip off the old block in that way. Which may go some way to explain the approach of Sheikh Jassim to this point. Remember, he wasn't there at Old Trafford uh, for the meetings. Jim Ratcliffe was, he was with Ineos. Sheikh Jassim has kept out of the, of the public spotlight to this point. If the bid is successful, that would obviously change. But as people who have worked with him throughout his corporate life, He's quite a guarded and reserved character. So maybe it wouldn't change that much. Again, a point worth discussing. Now this is, uh, this this bit here, it, from, from, a, from a transaction perspective, like the concept of buying Manchester United here, look, Sheikh Jassim's team are preparing transactional documents, including shareholder agreements, so that the takeover can go through immediately if their bid is, is, is accepted. And I've spoken about this with Ben Jacobs quite a few times, that this concept of it being transactionally backwards, that's pretty much what it is. 
that as soon as as a decision is made i imagine all the work that's needed behind the scenes is ready ready to go and just just flick the switch and it's there it's not like i think probably the same thing can be said about ineos and however they're going to structure it they're just waiting like 99 percent of the work is done uh, and that should be considered an exciting point because it hopefully means they'll be far quicker and on the pulse than the Glazers ever have been in actually making decisions and actually making moves. And as I said, the same thing can be said of Ineos. Uh, this final point here, uh, I've spoken about this quite a few times, right? And this is somebody who says, uh, no names, of course, and everything is, is anonymous, a regional expert. You can't do something of this mag magnitude as a Qatari citizen without not just approval, but full-on backing from the top. It can't happen without the very top of the ruling family being cool with it and being keen on it. And I've, sp I've spoken about that for some time. So he graduated from Sandhurst with the now current Emir of Qatar. At that point, of course, he wasn't the Emir. Five years after he graduated in 1998, he became heir to the throne. But this whole process is... With the Sheikh, with Sheikh Jassim's 9-2 Foundation has, has created that separation. And I think what this profile shows is that this, this sort of scrutiny that's going to go into it, hey, look, fact of the matter is the Premier League with Newcastle and Saudi Arabia, it was damn obvious that it was the Saudi state. They passed it through. Now, Mohammed bin Salman was the chairman of PIF, who are now the owners of Newcastle. So I'm not saying that any of this any of this stops Sheikh Jassim becoming Manchester United's owner. But the, the the profile there that's written by the Athletic, as I said, I'll leave the link the full link in the description. There's so much more in it, I couldn't fit it all in, and I wouldn't do that. I'd encourage you to read it in full. Because these are the questions that are going to be asked of Sheikh Jassim if he is successful. So we as a community and as a set of United fans, we should be reading and trying to absorb all this information ourselves. So that's what that is. Who is Sheikh Jassim? I now know a bit more about his his past, what he's done work-wise to date, a little bit more on his character. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. A slightly different video, a bit of a slower pace, this one. Uh, but a lot of new and quite key information, I think, has been presented there by The Athletic. And you can let me know what you think in the comments.